So, in my last uh, video, I did a Culp's oscillator, and now I'm going to do a Pierce oscillator crystal tester. On this side here, I had put the coal, that coal pits oscillator, and I will now build another oscillator on this side, independent of that one, and I'll be building this one. And I believe I'll be able to test uh, lower frequency uh, crystals. So, I'm not going to bore you with the populating of this. You can see the diagram. There you go. And in a moment, I will uh, populate it and test it and see how it comes out. So, magic, it's done, hopefully. Presto, here is the Pierce Gate oscillator here. I'm using the MC14069UBCP uh, CMOS um, X inverter. I had tried to use the uh, 74LS04, but had no hope of doing it. And on this one here, I put the components on one side and the wiring on the other side. So that circuit is this one here. Is this one here? And it's basically just laid out like that again, uh, exactly as that is. So I used the 20 picofarad uh, caps down here. This is the calculations that uh, you can do. Um, to figure out the resistor that needs to go in here, uh, the R uh, load or R1 uh, resistor can be about uh, one meg. Uh, it can vary, but you can take a look at the schematic. Uh, since there's no hope of me knowing what the capacitance or load capacitance is, I'm just going to estimate around 20. As for the stray capacitance, you got to be joking after uh, looking at the this. So, one moment and I'll hook it up. So, it's all hooked up. Uh, this is an 8 megahertz crystal. And it's coming out at 8.08377. Not too bad. I'll just pause and I'll stick the next crystal. Okay, this is a 6 megahertz crystal, and 6.00055, that's damn good. Next, this is a 4 megahertz crystal, and it's coming in at 4.000. Uh, one nine, so that looks pretty good. And this here is an abomination. It's a one point six eight six nine megahertz, and it's coming in at uh, one point six eight nine seven. Not too bad. The next thing I'm going to do is actually tidy up uh, these. I've got uh, two gates that were not hooked up uh, to ground, and you're supposed to. So I'm just going to do some quick soldering, fix that, and see if it changes these numbers in any way or shape or form. So I've now fixed those uh, gates. And this is what the 8's coming in from, and I can't remember the numbers, but I'll put a comparison on the screen. And here's the 6. And I'll put a comparison on the screen if there's any difference. And now the 4. Ditto. And now the 1 point whatever. So the next step is, is to change the RS uh, resistor, which I'll do now. 
And now we'll do these in reverse order. I put in a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor for RS and the one ish megahertz one is there. I'll post the number. This is the four megahertz one. And there's the waveform at 4.0002 megahertz. So this one's still working. And this is the 6 uh, megahertz one, and it is not working too well. It is still coming in, but it's now very uh, glitchy. And the 8 megahertz, not a hope. So, you obviously need to do your calculations. You've got to figure out your RS. It probably would help if I had the capacitors a bit closer to what they should be. So you can't make a single tester that'll do everything. If I want to get it above the 8 meg towards the 20 meg, I'm probably going to have to just uh, totally bypass that one uh, resistor. So another piece. I bypassed that uh, resistor. RS completely, so it's a, just a straight short there. This is the 4 megahertz one. This is a 6 megahertz one with a bypass uh, R2. This is the 8 megahertz with a bypass R2. And this is a 20 ish megahertz crystal. And that one's eh, kind of actually close. It's 20.4527, but it's a pretty crappy waveform. And that's it. Have a good day.